Eddie Jones here, welcome to Series 4 of Next Level. Uh, I hope you enjoy the coverage and we're delighted to give you a bit of an insight into England, England rugby team. I'm genuinely really excited to be back in contention. A couple of reasons, um, but the biggest one is probably seeing how good these youngsters are. I can't believe I say youngsters now, but after the last camp, walking in, seeing Courtney and both looking at each other like, oh no, we're like, we're those old guys in camp now. And we're looking around, we're like, they're so young. But it's great because I really look forward to trying to help them um, be themselves, enjoy the environment, enjoy the experience, not be overcome by all the pressure that, that can come with, with playing for England. And just go out and express yourselves. The boss, um, Okay, Eddie has always been particularly good with me, seeing as I've been in and out of contention for a number of years now. But I think he's always appreciated my honesty and vice versa. And I'll always be grateful to him giving me an opportunity again to come back um, and have another crack at it. He, he asked to meet up over the summer for a, for a coffee. He said he was down in Horsham. To which I was like, that's still like an hour away from where I live. <laughs> Not exactly close. But, you know, if the boss is asking for a coffee, I'm, I'm intrigued. Let's go see what it's about. I had to go pick, <laughs> I had to go pick up a motorhome um, on the same day from near the area. So then I said I'd come in after. So I've turned up at this posh hotel that it was on a break at. And I saw all these Bentleys, all those like matte black Mercs. And I could see the concierge of me in this motorhome just going... Oh no, this bloke surely can't come in here. Um, but I did, luckily the boss got me in. Um, we just sat and chewed the fat and spoke about how he sees the squad moving forward for the next two years and the, and the ambitions that, that he has and whether I wanted to be a part of it. I bit his hand off. He didn't appreciate me biting him. You know, he could get TB. I ain't got TB, but he could get it. So we had to patch that up, put a sticker on it, like a, like a plaster, sticky plaster. And I left. In terms of where this group's at, it's definitely the most diverse. In terms of age, backgrounds, cultures. And Eddie's, Eddie's spoken a lot about it over the last couple of years that it's a reflection of of where this country's at. It brings different opinions, it brings different outlooks on things, both on and off the field. It, you know, the rugby is obviously the important side of the thing, but you get loads of boys with different backgrounds and you help build a stronger group off the field, which is what we did in 2019, which is why I think that group for the World Cup was so... We were successful and, and tight and failed at the last hurdle, which people would argue you weren't successful then obviously but we were a very tight group and a lot of that was down to the diversity of it and i see a lot of similarities in this group moving forward just a lot younger at 31 i've still got loads that i need to improve on and i need to harness that energy that a young 24 25 year old ellis genge has got to then go, hang on a minute, I need to try and keep up with him now and use that energy to not only improve him, but carry on improving myself. Um, otherwise I'll be left way behind. And that hard work will start in Jersey and get us ready for the first, first game of the Autumn Internationals. We're in our pre-autumn camp in Jersey. It's the first time we've been here as a team. The Lions came here and had a very good camp and we've decided to come here instead of going to Portugal, which is our normal place 
because of the, the COVID regulations and it's a great spot. We've got a hotel right on the beach as you can see. Tomorrow we'll have a bit of a open sea activity to initiate the squad back to England Rugby and then we start training on uh, Wednesday afternoon. Being an old person from Coogee, it's always nice to be down the beach. Um, but we also find it's very relaxing for the players. Uh, they're able to come back from training and, and just have a dip in the sea, which is you know, one of the best forms of recovery. It's a pleasure to have you here, boys. Um, make yourself at home, obviously, new to the group, but don't be shy. Um, a relatively outspoken bunch. Uh, yeah, pleasure to have you with us. Uh, Dolly uh, was on loan at Jersey. How long ago, Dolly? Uh, two years ago. So he knows the island relatively well. If you want to go out there, then he's your man to go to. But boys, enjoy. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about the opportunity you got ahead of you. Like I reckon of the hundreds of players I've coached, I could probably name on one hand the players who have really maximised their potential. So, embrace the opportunity. You've got the opportunity to be the best player you can be. You've got the opportunity to be the best team in the world. How you approach it, the spirit you approach it will dictate how far we go. Dumbbell locked at your camera. Yeah. You have. have well, you? I have had one before. Oh, well, you've got experience. <laughs> Look at my leg, look at my leg! Got up a couple of times, scored this geezer. I was alright. Loads of board hit me in the head, and I decided to call it a day. It was good. Bloody hell, it's hard though. When you're on a wave? Like, it's easy, like you try to stand up and you fall off, whatever. I'm trying to get to the waves. It's a different story. I think whenever you go on a camp, particularly in an uh, environment that's uh, conducive to mixing as, as Jersey is, um, it enables the team to, to develop relationships off the field and particularly tomorrow with the Masoji, uh, we're hopeful that, that uh, those sort of relationships will start to develop. <laughs> Do I look ready? I think I'm ready. Hey, you should have fun. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Marcus. <laughs> How are you? Fuzzy. It's, it's on back to It's going to be the other way as well. I think the next two fit. I think it's going to be that one. I'm one of these in my life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I feel at my house. Pressure on the brain. <laughs> Strength and conditioning staff have come up with a, a paddle ball event where the players have to go, I think it's about two kilometres out, and find a way to keep everyone on board so hopefully we won't lose a few of them. In your four teams, you take your paddle board out, round the boy, and come back home again first. It's a race back to the start. Now the condition is that you're going to swim the paddle ball out. You've got to touch the paddle board, but you're not necessarily going to be on the paddle board. There's going to be a siren at some point in the race. That's up to you then. You can get on the paddle board and do what you want to get home. But before the siren, you just got to swim the paddle ball out. Being in contact with the paddle board at all times, okay? Now, if someone can't do this any longer, get on the paddle board, stick your hand up, and the lifeguards will come and get you. Yeah, there's no judgment if someone does that, all right? 100%. <laughs> if you want to do that, 100%. you do that. I'm not judging you, and there should be no judgment the other way either. <laughs> Come 
Ağla. I've got a slightly different relationship with the water and uh, I didn't want to ruin that relationship. I also didn't want to drag my teammates down as dead weight considering I can't swim and uh, I thought I'd give it a good go but knowing the fact that I nearly drowned in my three-year-old son's swimming lesson whilst all the other mums went to the deep end and I had to be dragged back by the swim teacher I shouldn't have gone in We're digging in, we just want to work together, work out ways of working together It's a mental, physical challenge so and I don't think there's anything more mentally taxing or physically taxing than being in the water at sea so we'll see how they go Go right, go right. Go right, Amazing experience. Uh, the minute we got in, it was freezing cold, but I think the teamwork, Genji Slady led the charge with Yorty and uh, managed to get back in the end with a bit of 1 2, 1 2. Excellent fun. Let's go! Yeah! What a trip! Yes, man! Great driving! It's not impressive in there, mate. Nice, man! Oh, yeah, the boys! What a beauty! Oh, it's good! <laughs> oh, struggled out there, but it's good. Swimming's not my forte, but this was good crew. Very good crew. Enjoyed it. That was a. Uh, that was tough. Oh, that was like an upper body burn, wasn't it? Yeah, we, yeah, we, it was good. The team worked hard together. Um, it felt like for about 20 minutes we weren't actually moving anywhere. Just getting battered by waves. Yeah, we'll we go again there. tomorrow. Yeah, we go again tomorrow. Twice the distance. So do you again? That was good. <laughs> do, you reckon, do you reckon Manu got some salt water in his ass? Yeah, in there, brother. And our paddle board just didn't seem to move as quickly as the other the other boys paddle boards but it wasn't through the lack of try and we were giving it our best shot we were just getting smashed by the waves and everything but no we just sort of no we stuck together sort of keep kept encouraging boys kept kept communicating with each other and we got there in the end and i think the big thing for that was was completing it, it wasn't necessarily you know where you come in the race if you like but it was a big achievement to to complete it as a group we got a great great sort of blend of, of boys that have been there and done it and, and you know been international for, for a long time and then there's quite a, a big group of boys that sort of are, are new to this environment and have only got a handful of caps or, or one or two so I think we've got a great mix and it's about sort of trying to get to know everyone and, and just really enjoy it and work hard together. This, this New England approach that we want, obviously, you know, we want to keep the, the fundamentals that England are about in terms of that dom dominant set piece, but obviously trying to sort of add a bit of variety in, in the way that we attack and sort of be, be ruthless with our defence. So hopefully that in the coming games we can, we can show that. It's the first time we're running out together here. So let's make sure if we don't understand anything, we make sure that we do. We stop it and ask questions if we need to. Don't be shy here today.
The game of rugby is a, a simple game. When you've got the ball, you've got to get down the other end of the field as quickly as you can to score points. And when the opposition have got the ball, you've got to stop them coming. But then within the game, there are nuances and the game certainly changed over the last 12 months. Yeah, there's a much stronger refereeing of the defence uh, as opposed to previously possibly the attack. So teams are, are finding more space in the game, the ruck ball's quicker, and we'd like to add a, a really aggressive mindset in terms of our attack to our traditional set piece and defence game. In terms of new information for the players, we chunk the information, you know, what's important this week to get down. We're playing Tonga in two weeks' time, so our first priority is to prepare for Tonga and we know they're going to be a, a physical, tough team. They're, they're getting a test match against Scotland on, on Saturday, so we'll have a look at them closely and make sure the information we give the players this week is, is the right, in, right level for Tonga. Well, as he tells just a little bit off, isn't it? It's like a good minus for us first time. So we either step into contact, okay, or I'll, I'll give you a little cue. Yeah. So that could be, that could be you, yeah? So I want you to get nice and wide on that. If not, you carry, and then we'll come back. We've got three new coaches, Richard uh, Cockrell, who's well known to the Leicester fans. I think he spent 21 years of his life as a player. A, a forwards coach, then head coach, director of rugby, probably drove the bus there at some stage. Set! Stay in there, Will. Stay in there, Will. They're thinking about chase your feet chase more. Chase your feet more. Yeah, good boy. Yes. Well done. Good boy. So he's come into a assist, Matt Proudfoot, with the forwards, particularly in the line-out area. Um, so we feel like we've really strengthened our forward coaching. And then in terms of the attack, uh, Martin Gleeson, who was formerly at St Helens and and Warrington Rugby League and England International and as coach of Salford and, and successfully at Wasps has come in to, to add to our attack and Anthony Seabold is one of the brightest young coaches from Australia in, a, in another code rugby league but will bring uh, a new dimension to our defence so all of those three coaches have made a, a really impressive start and we're sure they're going to add to creating a better coaching and learning environment for the players. Go, let's go, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, well, let's go, 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 let's go,